All right, all right, what is going on, my wonderful people of the world? Can we talk about scrubbiness? Can we talk about the dumbassery that tends to develop from snap judgments regarding things? So, this entire Nate Talks is going to be about Overwatch. Uh, and the reason being is that that's basically all I've been playing lately, and not necessarily that I've been playing it a ton, but just because I haven't had very, very limited free time, thanks mostly in part to July 4th, the wonderful Independence Day, and how much I had to work over like the week preceding it, the week of, and the week afterwards, I am so done with work. It's gonna be wonderful when all of those paychecks come through from all of those hours of work, but, for the actual time being, I was so done to the point where I was just like, look, I know you guys need help, I got other shit I need to do that I have been putting off in order to help you for many more hours than any sane person should actually be working, please leave me the fuck alone. Um, and so... <laughs> I've really I've had such limited free time lately that uh, and it's kind of all gone to Overwatch because I am really enjoying it. But uh, it also I was interesting because I kind of wrote down some notes regarding things that I wanted to discuss, some potentially perceived balance issues. But I'm the type of person that when I see something, I like to sit on it. I don't just immediately hop somewhere and be like this, this is bullshit. This needs changing. This is nonsense. Anything that I do. If I write something, if I write an essay, if I do some homework assignment, if I do anything, I write it, I shove it off to the side, and I sit on it for a day or two, and then I revisit it later. Because your thoughts are continually developing, even if you don't really consciously notice it, your thoughts, your thought process, it's evolving on things, and something that in the moment may have bothered you or you may have felt very strongly about can drastically change even moments later and so that's why I, I never like to make the type of snap judgments that a lot of people do because I'm sure a lot of those people come back and they look at it and they're like wow well I can't believe you know like I actually thought that so strongly that I went and I said something like that you know and I, I don't want to be the kind of person that makes those kinds of mistakes because they're silly and they're unnecessary and they speak negatively uh, toward yourself as a person and your lack of control over yourself and I like to believe that I am fully in control of myself um that was kind of a little a little bit more in depth than I wanted to go but it was interesting to look at my notes of things that I wrote within like the first week of playing Overwatch and now that I've become drastically more experienced and now that I've gotten significantly better even though sometimes it doesn't really feel like it because I can still scrub it up quite hard because uh, this is the first, I've never been uh, delved too deeply into first person shooters or shooters in general. And so, you know, I'm lacking in a lot of the areas kind of necessary in order to, uh, to succeed at them. Aiming, kind of just predicting movement, dealing. One of the things I struggle with the most that I don't struggle with quite as much anymore, but I still do a little bit. People jumping around like idiots, that kind of thing. Like, it's something that ultimately is actually fairly easy to deal with and there was actually it's helped me a lot to hear the mentality of professional fps players because one of them actually said like because you know there was uh, a lot of them stream now and so they're responding to stream questions and so one person on somebody's stream asked does it actually is it actually helpful to be jumping around like these people do and the guy's answer was no because regular movement you can go any direction that you want to when you're moving normally but a jump arc you can't you are stuck in that jump arc thus you become incredibly predictable thus it's incredibly easy to hit and it was that reasoning that understanding that just suddenly clicked to me and was like oh that's that's just something that requires practice once you understand where somebody is going when jumping it's easy it's the easiest thing in the world to kill them for you know a simple mistake like that but at the lower level the lower echelon of capabilities, uh, it's a very viable tactic because people's aims aren't very good. And that's, this is also obviously coming from somebody who plays on PC and has the vastly superior precision as opposed to using a controller. So that's another thing that I've really come to realize 
uh, that I was very ignorant of. I never really truly understood why everybody considered mouse and keyboard superior. But now that I have personally experienced this, and now that I have, again, heard the reasonings of people that play at a professional level and actually go to, you know, like the high stakes tournament, not high stakes, but uh, tournaments that have six figure payouts and that kind of thing. Um, now I really truly do understand. I don't want to delve deeply into it, but mostly it was just like I always thought it was because you could move the mouse quicker and uh, kind of point at something a lot easier than you can handle it with a controller with an analog stick. But in reality, it's actually because the range of movement and your control over exactly how fast you can vary it so well um, by having like actually a very low sensitivity where one of the pros that I was watching actually mentioned, like, if you play at the same sensitivity level as anybody that plays professionally, it's going to feel slow, it's going to feel weird, it's going to feel wrong. But that's because the professional players use, like, these huge mouse pads, like, f square foot or bigger sized mouse pads, and they have that entire area to control exactly where they want to go and so if they want to do a 180 they know exactly how far they need to flick their mouse and then they just pick it up and put it back down right in the center and it's just a natural movement and so like that entire thing it just never occurred to me and I never really understood it and now that I have been playing and trying to improve my aim uh, and all that stuff it really does make sense to the point where I'm like I don't even want to play the PS4 version of Overwatch anymore I'm tempted to purchase the PC version and see what I can do with that because I really do enjoy this game. Ultimately, despite a lot of negativity, which I'm going to get into in a bit, I really do enjoy this game. And I would, I think it's one of those games that's only going to get better in time as all of the people that are just kind of your generic FPS players, the one who want to, the ones who want to run around and treat it like a free for all and just want to, you know, have the best kill slash death ratio and don't care about anything else. Once they start dropping off, once another major FPS drops and they all gravitate toward that, the people that are going to be left are the people that have been, you know, on the grind, improving themselves, know, want to play as a team, want to play as a squad, know the role of the characters they're going to pick, and it's just going to improve in time because it's going to get more and more competitive and people are going to get better and better about utilizing appropriate teamwork and such that it really is just, you know, the sky's the limit with this game and hopefully... That is how it goes, that it stays, um, it maintains a strong community, and again, just gets better and better as time goes on, and if that is the case, then I would definitely want to get this game on PC, because it is a very different experience uh, playing with a mouse and keyboard versus utilizing a controller, and when it comes to myself, I'm the kind of person that it's like, when I can see two drastically different methods of playing a game where one is clearly objectively superior there's no debate about it there's no questioning it it is better period why would i not want to play that version if i'm trying to you know as the age-old internet meme phrase has become if i was not trying if i was trying to get good why would i not do it with the best tools available um but either way, that's neither here nor there. That's not really discussing the game. That's discussing myself. So let's discuss the game. Everybody seems to hate everybody. If there's one thing I have learned, it is that everybody who talks about this game is an amazing player. Fantastic. The best. Gold medals. All right. If you don't know how the game system works, um, the game keeps track of certain statistics for your character and so like there are I think five universal statistics the game keeps track of kills damage done uh, objective kills which is you know kills on top of the actual objective point that mattered toward you know either moving the objective along or keeping the enemy from moving it along based upon whether you're on attack or defense uh, ob objective time so how much time you have spent either attacking or defending on the objective and the fifth one is healing done. So obviously that is useful for healers or other characters that can potentially heal themselves. And then there's a sixth one that he keeps track of, and that's deaths. But thankfully they don't grant medals for that. It would be kind of amazing if it did, just because it would be phenomenal to see, like, 87 deaths gold medal for this person at the end of the round. It's just like, wow, good job. But I kind of feel like that would be a little bit 
potentially abusive toward the support characters who tend to be singled out by the better players who know like support characters can make or break an entire fight and you don't want them there you want to keep yours alive and you want the enemies dead and so if a support character ate the most deaths people already look toward those characters to be like well why didn't you do better if you would just kept me alive for five more seconds i would have wiped the entire team even though i had done no damage prior to this <laughs> right like but so if there's any one thing that i have learned is that everybody is the best at the game ever and everybody else is holding them back and they're terrible and they're doing nothing and they're just the dumbest people alive in the world universally if everybody was as good as they said the game would be a lot more competitive so i have to question things i got questions regarding the actual effectiveness of these people who claim they are so great um I'm certainly not the kind of person that can do that. I very much know my faults. The reason why I know my faults is because I am far more successful when I pick a character like Winston or Reinhardt, who, for those of you who may not know how those characters work, they don't require aim. Reinhardt is a big, giant, armored motherfucker with a huge shield that swings a massive hammer. He does have a projectile that requires a little bit of aim, but it is on a cooldown, I think like six seconds, I want to say. Uh, so he doesn't require a lot of precision aiming. Winston has a Tesla gun, a lightning shooting gun, that just shoots, that auto-aims. As long as the person is within your field of vision, and also within a certain distance, his gun hits. Thus, I don't need to aim for headshots, I don't need to aim for body shots, I don't have to aim for anything, I just gotta make sure you're in front of me. So, obviously, I got some flaws in terms of my gameplay, and they are very well highlighted when I pick a character like McCree, or Soldier 76, or Lucio, or anybody that requires me to actually aim at somebody to hit them. I'm very well aware of my personal weaknesses as a uh, shooting game player now, and I'm working on improving those, and we'll see how it goes, but that's one reason why I kind of want to, again why I would want to switch to PC is because it's like why would I expend all this effort to get good at a game that isn't really that good in this medium right like if I'm gonna practice aiming if I'm gonna get good at this kind of thing why would I not do it on PC instead of you know using all this effort expending all this time and then later on being like fuck it I'm gonna go to PC anyway and then just repeating the entire process because they're two different worlds but anyway, I never really finished my initials. Basically, the worst part about this game right now, there's not many objective things wrong with the game. There are some, and I will definitely get into them in a bit. But right now, the worst part of the game for me personally is definitely the community. If you have somebody with a microphone, chances are they're going to be raging and screaming. And even though they're performing just as bad as everybody else, everybody else sucks and they're the worst players in the world and blah, blah, blah. I did have one person one time when I was playing Mercy on a microphone because I kept I was just flitting like it, it was a good team they maintained a uh, somewhat line of sight with each other so I was able to flit back and forth between them I was able to uh, easily heal whoever needed it at the time because thankfully again they kind of nobody went running off on their own and they kind of all stayed within a certain area and thus I was able to keep most of them alive and heal them and somebody on the microphone was like man this guy's awesome when I was healing him I was like yeah I love you you're my favorite every other person that's been on the microphone has been like should I just switch to May and get this dude killed 7,000 times just because fuck this guy? <laughs> and that's the kind of mentality that a lot of the people playing this game right now kind of provoke in you where you're just like, I want to get them killed more than I want to get the enemy team killed. Maybe I should facilitate that. <laughs> and I think that speaks toward uh, how a lot of people feel about a lot of the different players in this game. And so I would definitely say, like, the worst part about it right now is the community. There is a lot of negativity swirling around right now. There are a lot of people who, again, they basically, they want to play single player and they think that they're capable of going 1v6 and succeeding. They're not. It'll never work. They just die over and over and they're like, well, where was the rest of my team? We were all waiting at spawn for everybody else to get ready. And while you were running off and dying like a dumbass, <laughs> like, there's nothing we can fucking do about that. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, 
there's a lot of things that just I could go into situation after situation, especially as somebody who has put in a lot of time as Reinhardt. I think I want to say I've put in three times as much uh, time overall because it, it has this nice little. I don't have my PS4 uh, active right now, so I can't actually look. I don't know why I said active. I don't have my PS4 turned on right now. Um, <laughs> but they have this overall statistics screen which is actually really cool and it shows you time played with every single character and the last time I looked I was Zenyatta was second and I had three times as much time invested in Reinhardt as I did in uh, Zenyatta so obviously I've played a lot of Reinhardt uh, and I've gotten I would say fairly adept at utilizing him I've definitely out of all the Reinhardts that I have fought against that I've played with I would definitely rank myself among the best of them and Obviously, that is, you know, the low level of people that I'm matched up with. I'm certainly not being like, well, the best professional teams in the world, if you ever need a Reinhardt, look no further. I'm right here. I'm nowhere near that good. I have seen the best Reinhardts. They don't miss charges. They don't miss fire strikes. They know exactly when to use Earth Shatter. It is night and day between their quality and my quality. But in terms of just kind of like the average level, I'm above that. At least, I definitely consider myself a very good Reinhardt uh, on PS4. I guess that's probably the best way of putting it. And uh, people are not good at utilizing Reinhardt. Like I can't. One of the most recent games, I actually recorded a video uh, before I did this of a match, and we were up against six Hanzos. The enemy, and that happens occasionally when you're playing quick play. People are just playing for fun. It's not all, you know, serious times and stuff. So a, a few of the times you'll run into a team where they're using six of the same character, or you will join a team who wants to use six of the same character. And in this particular case, the enemy team was using six Hanzos. So Reinhardt's pretty damn good against Hanzo because he doesn't really have a rapid fire, uh, massive. Ooh, excuse me, damage output that he can use to easily take down the shield. Now, six concentrated fires from Hanzo's uh, can take my shield down fairly quickly because I think they do like 125, maybe 120, 125 damage per shot, per charged shot if they keep it held down for the entire time. So six of those, that's 720 damage per shot. That's three rounds of, fire, of concentrated fire on my shield and it's done. So, if they were organized and they were, you know, making a concentrated effort at taking down the shield, it could happen fairly quickly. But they weren't. But so, basically right at the beginning, I'm walking forward, got my shield held up, I'm blocking like two or three of the Hanzos shooting at me. And this fucking Soldier 76 just barrels right through the shield with no care in the world, eats a scatter shot to the face, gets one shot. And like, that is the life of a Reinhardt when you're playing with a low level team. People will just not care that you have your shield up. They'll run in front of it to try to get kills, and they'll get killed themselves. It is a sad life, and it's actually why my utilization of him has dropped off drastically since I have started getting better and better and having uh, a more in-depth understanding of the game itself is because it's like, why use this character whose entire purpose is to give people an advantage at sticking behind me and picking people off from a distance while we slowly move forward and then when the time is right I drop the shield I throw out a fire strike or a charge or if I have my ultimate I drop earth shatter and hopefully catch three or four people in it and we make a rush of it and we hopefully wipe them out and then move you know either move the objective along or we go back to a defensive position that we had at the beginning nobody ever does that I cannot count how many times I've been like alright let me turn around real quick Alright, cool. I got my entire team behind me. We're ready. Let's push. Throw up the shield. Start walking forward. Enemy starts peppering my shield. And I'm like, alright, cool. They don't have a Reinhardt of their own. Let's go, team. Pick them off one by one. And then nobody's shooting around me. I don't see any shots going in the opposite direction. Everything is aimed at me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, kill somebody. I'm going to die here. Like, kill somebody. And then my shield breaks. And I'm like, well, shit. I better, you know get to cover sometimes i manage to get out of the line of sight and i survive sometimes i don't but every single time i look back nobody's there and so i look for the little arrows that denote where my team is every single one of the dumb motherfuckers has decided it would be a brilliant idea to flank at this moment in time the reinhardt's drawing attention so fuck it throw them to the wolves right 
except none of them are organized none of them make a concentrated effort at actually taking anybody down and they just get picked off one by one as they slowly trickle in while i'm sitting there off in the corner like well fuck i can't do anything now (laughs) it's gotten to the point where i will actually if i get matched up with a team like this i will stay with reinhardt and i will build up earth shatter through the slow use of fire strikes or just rushing in for shits and giggles with a charge or something and just hitting people, dying and then moving back in. I'll get an earth shatter. I'll line it up. I'll hit five people, maybe their entire team, and then I'll just do Reinhardt's emote. I don't kill any of them. I don't do anything off of it. I just do Reinhardt's emote, and then I stand there and let them kill me. Because fuck that team. <laughs> I don't even care. If they're mad about the ineffective Reinhardt, too bad. Fuck you guys. So that's kind of the level of competition that I'm currently getting matched up with is that they're, it's not effective. People don't want to work as a unit. They want to be the hero. They want to be the one that gets the play of the game. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, all right, use me, guys. I'm your best tool to win this fight. Where's everybody going? Why are you all the God damn it? All right, well, I'll just watch the kill feed. Enjoy. <laughs> Nothing else I can do. And so that's what a lot of it uh, kind of winds up being. So that's why I kind of mentioned that the mention, like that was a small amount of talking regarding this subject. Uh, that's why I talk about the community first, is because I do think it requires it requires some patience and the understanding that it's okay. You're going to lose. You're going to get matched up with people that are stupid. You're going to get matched up with people that are reckless and impatient and don't want to work as a team. You're going to get matched up with countless people who refuse to wait for the entire team to be ready before they go off and try to rush the point again and again and again and die again and again and again and then probably go to Reddit or somewhere else and bitch and moan about the shitty Reinhardt or the shitty Mercy who just didn't help them at all even though they were on their own the entire time and there was nothing anybody could have done about it. Uh, that's the life and times of Overwatch right now. So, if you are use- if you yourself are looking to potentially get into it, keep that in mind it's a joyful world out there um but in terms of actual objective flaws with the game my first and biggest issue is actually the business model so a term that has been developed for a lot of kind of portable not portable games but like free to play cell phone games uh mobile gaming i actually that's the proper term freemium the idea that this is free to play but there are things that you can purchase through the use of money you know whether it's one of those games where you have a limited amount of plays per x amount of time but you can purchase more plays if you really want to uh custom i mean not custom stuff but like uh customizables i guess would be what i'm looking for so like just costumes skins certain stuff like that that's what uh is in Overwatch is that there's a lot of customizable stuff. You can customize your in-game emotes, so like an action that you can select, voice lines that you can select, uh, victory poses, actual costume skins, like stuff like that. Very, very widespread throughout Overwatch. And that's something that also exists, like for instance, probably the one of the biggest uh, things that galvanized the entire business model to begin with, League of Legends. Obviously, everybody knows what League of Legends is. Even if you don't play it, I've never played it personally, but I still know what it is. I still know at least a decent amount about it thanks to countless people talking to me about it, even though, again, I don't really have any interest in the game or the game genre itself. All this stuff, it's just... It's built like a free-to-play model where you can purchase customizable things. You purchase these things called loot boxes. And they give you four, like, four of the free custom, not free, but they unlock four of the custom stuff that's available in the game. I'm kind of stumbling over my words right now. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm very tired. I need to sleep. I should have just slept. should have just gone to sleep, but fuck it. I had to do a Nate Talks. Um, but yeah, so it'll unlock four of the customizable items in the game. And so my big problem with it is that number one, there's like 50 plus per character and i think there's 21 characters in the game i want to say 22 now if you actually count anna um so obviously that's at least 1100 customizable items in the game you're getting four per box 
that means you're gonna have to unlock what at least 275 is that right you're gonna need at minimum 275 loot boxes you only get one loot box per level up so like right now after a pretty solid amount of playtime across spread out over about a month I'm level like 74 right now that's not even a third of the way there after a month of time now here's the kicker it doesn't remove objects you've already obtained from the prize pool so you can get duplicates but there's also a currency within the game so everything has a price that you can purchase it at so every single duplicate gives you a certain amount of that currency now if it was a fair model not designed to promote purchasing the DLC loot boxes which they do have DLC packages where you can purchase like five of them or ten of them I think the max I think it's like five ten twenty fifty I want to say is how it progresses I don't actually know I didn't pay enough attention to it to actually care because I will never support a business model like that I will never buy that kind of thing if I already had to purchase the game to begin with and that's where my problem stems from is that this was a game that I had to purchase by itself already why are you feeding me this freemium business model on top of a game that cost money to begin with that irks me and I don't like the implication behind it and the idea that that might be how Blizzard uh, handles its business from this time onward and so just that alone is like I, I don't like it I honestly I hate it and because of that like I said I will never purchase a loot box myself and obviously plenty of people have been buying them like there's no way in hell those things have not been selling like hotcakes that kind of thing always sells like hotcakes um, but I wish it didn't I wish that business model didn't work but it does it's proven time and time again and I'm sure it's, sure it's working fantastically for overwatch but so anyway back to the duplicate thing you get a certain amount of currency based on how much that item costs to begin with a fifth of it a fifth of it why would they not just give you exact like if they were looking to be fair if they were looking for everything to be realistically obtainable just through naturally playing the game within a decent time frame I mean obviously like three years from now I'm certain everybody's gonna have unlocked everything but within a realistic time I feel like any game if you have to purchase it everything should be realistically obtainable and that's also a little bit of a flaw that I could direct towards Street Fighter 5 as well but I'm not here to talk about that but it's just they do have similar business models in mind and thus there are certain parallels in the comparison um, but it really is just disgusting how they kind of make it intentionally difficult to get the things you want so that it promotes spending even more money on top of the money you've already spent in purchasing their game to begin with I don't like that business model um, but that's really all I have to say about that their matchmaking is absolute trash I don't know what it like it blatantly lies to you that's the worst part the game actually lies to you so there have been numerous times where there are all sorts of things people believe to be the cause of these things like for instance uh, people believe the game attempts to balance your win record at 50% wins and losses perfectly so if you start to get a little bit above 50% wins it starts putting you on teams that are probably not going to win on the flip side if you start getting below 50% wins uh, you could put on teams that can realistically carry you and that you won't drag them down too hard that is the belief I have no idea if that's true uh, I will just say that there has been some very noticeable moments when I get put on a team that had absolutely no chance of losing likewise I have been put on a team that has absolutely no chance of winning I don't know if there's a correlation there I don't know if that's the cause but I'm just saying there's some logic behind the conclusion I just don't know about uh, the actual evidence that led to that conclusion and whether or not it's true but um, well, where was I actually going with that oh the matchmaking so a lot of people believe so what happens is that you will constantly just get kicked from lobbies for no reason whatsoever it is impossible to just stay in one lobby for an entire day for even like 
an hour, it's impossible. I think the maximum amount of games I've gotten in a single lobby is four before it boots me out and sends me somewhere else. So you're just consistently getting kicked out of lobbies for one reason or another, and quite often the reasoning is not enough players disbanding the room, finding you a new one. I cannot count how many times I have received that message only to be put back directly into the lobby I just left with the same exact players. Now, maybe out of the millions of people playing Overwatch, actually I probably shouldn't say millions, millions bought it, but out of the thousands of people currently playing Overwatch, I'm sure it's entirely realistic for the same exact 12 people to just have a lobby disbanded and been, then get put back into the same exact one on the same exact map that we would have been on if we had proceeded normally, but somehow I'm questioning it a little bit. Um, and likewise, it's like you have 11 out of the 12 slots filled and the game will boot you and be like, not enough players sending you to a new room like you needed one slot you're telling me there's not a single motherfucker out there available right now searching for a match what is this matchmaking and so it's the matchmaking system is just one of the most terrible things i have ever witnessed in my time in gaming it's just there's no defending it it's just plain bad there's nothing good about it um but either way it's still, I mean, it's not that big of a deal given that I only play on quick play. And given that really, if you're actually looking for a completely positive experience, you should not be playing alone anyway. Like, you should not, they call it solo queuing when you just join in a game with a bunch of randoms and you just play with a bunch of randoms. You're not really using a microphone for communication. You're not really doing any of that shit. You just hop in and play. And that's what I've been doing. And. It's very clear that you should definitely have a pre-made group if you want to actually get anywhere and have a thoroughly enjoyable experience all the way around. Otherwise, you're going to wind up like me and you're just going to make your own fun. You're going to pick Winston and just hop behind enemy lines and put down your bubble and be like, hello, and then just hop away. Like that kind of shit. I, just, I make my own fun sometimes. I have to because some of the people you get matched up with are like so agonizingly either stupid or just ineffective like who knows what it is and I'm obviously like I've never once I will never claim that I am not sometimes part of the problem if I'm trying to learn a new character I might be ineffective with him the very first time I picked McCree that was probably the worst game of overwatch I have ever played in my life because he requires such precision aiming to actually be effective this was post nerf mccree by the way so he wasn't you know the kind of deal where you can just flashbang and fan the hammer kill everything in the game easily um and so if you want to succeed with that mccree you need to be amazing at headshots i'm not amazing at headshots so when i picked mccree i was probably the most useless member on my team i don't actually know because you can't see other people's statistics but I'm fairly confident in the fact that I was the worst person on my team. So I'm certainly not innocent of being that person that is just like, why are you even playing this game? You're so bad. It's like, sorry, I'm learning. But if I'm matched up and it's clearly like it's not fun to actually try because my team, you know, refuses to organize or they're just getting completely outplayed by the other side there's only so much a single person can do thus again i make my own fun um but yeah you should definitely if you want to maximize your experience i hope you have friends that would like to play the game or i hope you are outgoing and are willing to make friends with which to play the game together because if you solo queue uh you're in for some misery for the time being anyway uh so what else did i want to there was something else that i wanted to talk about I know there was something else. There was matchmaking. There was the business model. There was the people. I did... Originally, I actually wanted to talk about all the characters individually, but that would take so goddamn long, and there are so many other character overviews out there that are singularly focused towards one character that it's far more effective than I would ever be, so I don't want to get into that. But let me spin it back to what I was originally talking about at the very beginning of this video, how scrub mentality and snap judgments are a bad thing. Let me just talk to you about the very first note I wrote on here. D Diva being able to self-destruct her mech and instantly resummon it. I thought that was a balance problem at the beginning. 
because I thought her uh, ultimate was overpowered. Now, a month later, you don't get hit by that shit to the point where they've actually buffed it because nobody ever gets hit by it. And it's actually really bad. And so, again, that's what I kind of mean when I talk about There's a, a few other things on here. Some of them were legitimate. Like, for instance, McCree, he got nerfed with the flashbang and then the fan the hammer one shot on everybody in the game. That was not okay. Uh, let me see here. Reinhardt, I still think he should actually be able to do 100 damage uh, per normal swing of his hammer. Right now he only does 75, and because of that, it could, like, for instance, he needs three swings to be able to kill Genji. You will never get three swings off on a Genji. Now, that isn't to say that I believe Reinhardt should consistently kill Genji, but if the Genji player actually gets close enough to get hit twice, they fucked up and they deserve to die. Whereas, if they fuck up, they still won't die because you will never land three Reinhardt hits against a Genji. You might land two. Chances are you're going to land one and then they'll be gone before you can ever land the second. And so situations like that, there's far more specific you know, things that I could point to. Uh, for instance, Junkrat's tire has 100 health. And he can kill it with his fire strike. But if you don't have fire strike up and you hear Junkrat's tire, you're done. Whereas I feel like if a Junkrat is greedy enough to want to land that tire in range of Reinhardt's swing, he should have to risk having it be killed by his swing. But if that's not a possibility, then it's just like Reinhardt's just fucked. And I don't really think that's okay. And again, there are other reasons, but I just, you know, looking at this list, it's stuff that really is just like, wow, yeah, that was that was a mistake to think that way at the beginning. That was definitely a snap judgment that never should have been acted upon, and that is why it is so difficult to be a game developer. Because you have so many people clamoring for that day one nerf of something they think is overpowered, is ridiculous, should not exist in the game, and then as experience grows, as your own awareness of certain situations grows, suddenly that thing that seemed massively overpowered is useless now. And so you have to have, you know, like you have to have some thick skin if you want to be a game developer because people will be so will be on your ass night and day regarding so many things and it's tough to not succumb to that. It's tough to be like, oh god, just make it stop. I'm sick and tired of getting 17,000 emails a day bitching to me about Diva's Ultimate. I'm sick and tired of getting 17 million emails a day bitching to me about Torbjorn's turret. Just fuck it, just end it all! And they actually did do a snap judgment regarding Torbjorn's turret, which I don't agree with at all. Um, so Torbjorn is a character that can build his own turrets in the game. Now these turrets are ridiculous. Not for like so the way they nerfed it is they uh reduced the damage each shot of his turret does which in my opinion was never the problem the amount of damage it output was never the problem it was the fact that its auto tracking was perfect to the point where if you get killed by it the game has a kill cam so you can see what killed you each time i cannot count how many times i have been running along behind a wall and that turret has swiveled to me while I'm still behind the wall, completely out of sight, and started tracking me. But it hasn't started firing yet. It only starts firing the millisecond I, my sprite steps out from behind the wall and starts shooting me. That level of auto-tracking is not okay. It should not be that effective. And so that's where my big problem stem from, is the fact that it's just like... There's no escaping it. There's no way to prevent getting hit by that unless you're like D.Va. And you can nullify it. But even... I mean, Diva's basically the best character in the game at handling Torbjorn. Because she can literally just fly right up to it and kill it in, like, a quarter of a second. But almost nobody uses Diva. But either... Like, I don't think it deserved a nerf. But if there was anything I was going to nerf about the turret, it definitely would not have been the damage. Because that is such a minuscule part of the actual overall problem that is causing people to complain in the... Uh, to begin with and so that's why you know like when I saw that I was just like wow they're lazy like that is just that is a placating motion that is not something they did because they actually perceive a balance issue that's that's an action taken in order to reduce the amount of tears that are currently flowing in an attempt to reduce the tears that are currently flowing and that is not something you should ever do as a game developer but either way I think that's I have talked for long enough my throat is now dry as shit. <laughs> so, thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.